Nobody, what is that spawned on the runway right here? Obviously a supersonic airplane. Everybody, is that the Concorde? Ski? Because it is the Concorde Ski. Yes, everybody, the Tupolev F2 144. A plane that I indeed called the Soviet's fake Concorde a while ago in 2019 when I visited a museum in Germany that has both the Concorde and the Tupolev F2 144 as an open exhibition. I took a look into the cabins of both of them. You know, comparing the Concorde that to the Tupolev. A lot, a lot more spacious. I mean, this is what the Concorde looks like, and this is what the Tupolev looks like. I mean, this is what the Tupolev looks like. The way I look at those ugly lights. Jesus Christ. That is genuinely ugly. Now, this museum was quite cool, and I've always been super interested. What was it like to fly the Tupolev to 144? A plane which development was started a bit later later than the Concorde in 1963, but maybe due to spying and maybe due to um, kind of rush development, was finished quite a lot before the Concorde. Yes, well, the Tupolev 144 had its first flight in 1968. The Concorde only took skies around three months later, 1969, but stuck around for a lot longer. I mean, it flew passengers around till 2003, but the Tupolev was already retired by 1978 after being introduced in the 1975. Everybody, what what is it like to fly this? We now can kind of find out because for the first time we finally have a medium good looking Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 add on for it. It's only an FSX port, but it does look quite nice. We have the very Tupolevian shoots right here. We have a cockpit that very much looks like the Tupolev that I saw in real life. It doesn't look too bad at all, but it doesn't look too good either. I mean, it's just an FSX port, so it's going to have quite a lot of, um, problem. That's fine. Take a look at this right here. This is the original Tupolev cockpit. And well, let me tell you the workload on the pilots and on the engineers must have been a genuine pain in the ass. I wouldn't have wanted to fly this airplane. I, even as a passenger, I wouldn't have. The plane crashed twice, which is twice as much as the Concorde. All right, maybe let's see. All right, we have no cabin. Well, it's, it's good because it's very ugly indeed, as we just found out. Everybody, this is what it looks like. Obviously, our view is kind of obstructed as it is in the Concorde. Yes, indeed. In order to take out we have to put this airplane into critical flying mode by putting the flaps out right here and you can see yes first thing we notice is that the kind of like a snoot droot comes out and also yes as you can see there is some sort of wing so it has a flap coming out which makes this airplane look very much like an ant that's how it stands at the museum as well with the snoot droot down that's actually the coolest thing Thing about this airplane. Let's go ahead and take off. I, I imagine the physics are insanely poor. Something we don't have at all is any afterburners animated. We can just hear the engine go for power and imagine some afterburners right here. I mean, it's a little sad. The afterburner was the biggest event on the Tupolev 2144 as it was always on, which is why the cabin, which was insanely ugly, by the way, the cabin noise. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take off right there. Yes, you can see a little bit of a little bit of tilted landing gear. You know, we might see a butter machine right here. We have just taken off. You know, the performance is maybe a little slow, but this doesn't feel too far off from the Concorde. Yes, it does need an insane amount of speed to take off. After all, we have the relatively the same design of the Delta wing. Let's go ahead now and get the flaps up. First of all, put this airplane out of critical flying mode. Once we're fast enough, we don't, I guess, need that flap in front in order to maintain progress proper lift. It's interesting how the Concorde didn't need that. Perhaps the nose is a little bit longer. What is really freaky though about the Tupolev 2 144 is the landing gear animation and we shall have a look at that. Take a look at that. What in the mighty Soviet Christ is this? What? In the fuck. I guess it's a very smart design. We have these very powerful colossal engines here. And I guess a very good way to fit landing gear between them is just by 
folding them. That is insanely crazy. No wonder this plane flew for only three years. It sounds like an actual reliability nightmare. This plane must have been insanely unreliable as well. But come on, let's maybe take things seriously. Get the landing gear down again. That's a very Soviet thing that the airplane would even let us do that. Put the landing gear down. Let's go ahead and now maybe see if we can get this plane to fly fast. In real life, it did fly a little bit faster than the Concorde. Probably because it was, you know, built out of different materials. This is a very titanium steel heavy airplane. Concorde was made out of aluminum. I don't think they wanted to stress it that bad. Let's go ahead and actually get up in the sky. All right. I would very much like to see how fast we're going. Our airspeed is... I, I don't even know if that's kilometers per hour or not. It's not very helpful. That thing is also... The cockpit is like genuinely not working. Not at all working. No attitude. But we do... Oh, wait, never mind. We do have the vertical speed indicator. <laughs> anyway, nothing here. I guess this airplane still needs quite a lot of work to make it perfect. The cockpit has to be done. And of course, the afterburners has to be done. Other than that, it seems like a pretty good add-on so far. Let's maybe go ahead and use whatever is coming out of the tail of the aircraft. So let's go ahead and land our airplane down here. This is St. Bartholomew Airport, and this is a dumb, dumb, a dumb idea, but that's fine. Let's get this airplane into landing mode once again. Put the landing gear down, which looks comical. All right, do it. Oh, God, the airplane. Oh, the airport is already down there. We're not, we're not going to make it. Aha, but do... <laughs> Do I see something right there, everybody? We're stopping comically fast as well. Because, yes, if you put the spoilers up, you can actually see... Oh, God. This flap opening, out of which comes the parachutes of light. Go ahead and land her now. Which is a bit hard to do because... Oh, my. You can't even use the cockpit very well because the, the nose cone doesn't come down. All right. All right. This is going to be quite a bit of a mess now. Okay. Come on. Stop! Yeah, no, it hasn't worked well at all. Oh, this is not a very suitable airport, is it? But here you go for the first time. We could actually see. I think this is the first time in the flight simulator that I've ever seen. Shoots. Take a look. They're kind of animated as well, which is kind of cute. We can see them come out of this. Again, was the, one of the out of this tail. I guess the reason they need it is is because this plane does land at a little bit of a higher speed as well, so it definitely needs those to stop us. Maybe try a proper runway. All right. Yeah, it is a bit a bit hard, you know, operating from this cockpit. You don't have any instruments at all that tell you what you're doing or what you're up to. You're just kind of pray. Uh, Come on! Go ahead and land. What in the absolute f- Oh, no, no, down there is the runway. I can see it. Beautiful. Come on, see a beautiful touchdown, please. Yes, everybody, that was beautiful. It's now time to get this plane to stop. Are we on the runway? I hope we were. Yes, and we are stopping just fine on the Concorde, uh, on, on the Tupolev. Beautiful. Hey, buddy, indeed, that's what I'm talking about. I truly do appreciate this new add-on. I can't wait to see more updates, maybe see if someone actually gets it to work well. Until then, we've got this, you know, relatively okay. Shut up. What is that now? Relatively okay add-on of the Konkortsky. Traveling back in time to a plane that really didn't work out. Even less than the Concorde. So, I thank you guys so, so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters, <laughs> Guns Killer. R27, James Duram, That Dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishijitsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.